Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you're joining us from around the world. Welcome to day three here of the Paris Air Show in Le Bourget. It's so good to have you back. We'll be bringing you in the next 10 or 15 minutes the latest of our aircraft flying up above the skies of Paris. I'm actually right in front of a MMRT. This is a refueling tanker belonging to the French Air Force. It has really some pretty vital roles. It can be basically a flying petrol station to refuel aircraft. It has a huge uh, fuel tank. It has some amazing capabilities. It can fly troops places in urgency, and it can also uh, do amazing deliveries. It's a quite a fascinating aircraft, and it just shows part of the whole portfolio that Airbus has, the commercial and the defense side. I'll have some really special guests that are just over by, by the side to me and uh, they will be able to give us some amazing, amazing insight into some of these aircraft that you'll be seeing flying in a few minutes. There have been some really big announcements. If you, you, were, you weren't here yesterday, if you weren't here yesterday and you missed us, we had some major announcements. Here's a look back on what happened yesterday. Just as I come back to you, we have uh, the military fighter planes like Rafale taking to the skies again. So they'll be making a lot of noise and I'll be trying to speak above it. So do bear with me. They're an amazing sight, of course, as well. We've had some major announcements this morning as well. Let me tell you about a few of them. I had to take some notes. As you know, Airbus launched the extra long range this week and it's been really clocking up the orders. More early ones this morning from Australia, Qantas, took a whole bunch of XLRs, the 321, because of the extra range you can do. We also had a great offer from Indigo Partners buying 50, and we had a Sipiter based in Dublin buying the A320. Let's just let those noisy planes get past. So just a huge, huge orders for the A321 XLR. As you know, one thing that Airbus has been very vocal about is the UK position on Brexit. And it's very important that Airbus gets its views across on that. Earlier, I spoke to the head of Airbus UK about the Brexit situation, Catherine Bennett. Let's listen in to what she has to say on the subject. Electrification is such a hot topic right now in the aerospace industry. Airbus has carried out 80 flights with Vahana, all have been electric. The next step are things like the EFAN X. For more on this, here's the expert, Glenn. So Glenn, you know, we have the EFAN X here and so many other projects, tell me about them. Yeah, great, so EFAN X is a technology demonstrator which is about taking electric propulsion technology to a very high power level. So here we're talking about a two megawatt electric motor mounted on the wing instead of a traditional gas turbine. We have batteries inside the fuselage and a gas turbine with an electrical generator allowing us to test a hybrid electric configuration at significant scale. Is this all fantasy world or is this going to become a reality? This is definitely a reality. We see the technology progressing at an increasing pace because of investment from aviation, of course, but even higher investment from automotive, from consumer electronics industries, and from the energy supply industry in order to transition society to uh, renewable energy. That investment is helping with the technologies that we need to make this kind of technology a reality for commercial aircraft. It's great to have this kind of project going on, but you obviously have to have the airlines prepared to actually fly with them. I guess you are working in partnership and collaboration with the airlines? 
Yes, we are. And one, one really good example is a collaborative research agreement that we signed with SAS Scandinavian Airlines recently, where we're looking with them at what it means to operate a hybrid or electric aircraft, what's the infrastructure requirements around that aircraft at the airports, and how does it change how they manage their fleet if they have an aircraft, for example, which has shorter range, which could be a limitation of future electric aircraft. Even though they're zero emissions, they may have a limitation in terms of range. We think it's really essential to reduce the CO2 emissions of our products. Um, we see that society expects us to do that, and as a business we see opportunity in doing that. Um, that's one of the reasons why we're investing in several demonstrators uh, to, to test this technology, to mature it, and really to bring this technology to commercial aviation in the future. In my lifetime, I've gone from landlines to mobile phones, and I've even discovered the internet. All these things you're talking about, will they occur in my lifetime? Already today, um, Vahana, City Airbus, these are, uh, these are flying. They are flying with zero emissions technology. They're fully electric. Uh, so already today, aviation is impacted by these technologies um, right now. What we're talking about is scaling that technology that we see flying at this smaller scale and bringing it to, to large commercial aircraft. We believe that that's possible uh, to, to bring to commercial aviation in the 2030s horizon. And I think we're going to see even more demonstrators over the next years, which prove that that's really a possible target. Okay, well, I'm looking forward to that. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Welcome back. Actually, I was going to show you that story right afterwards, all the electrification and how important that is as Airbus looks at really respecting its sustainable and environmental goals. But that was a fascinating look on what Airbus is doing really to meet those goals and electrification is such an important issue. Um, as I'm talking, you know there's um, military jets flying above as part of the whole display. Fascinating, but they're quite noisy and hopefully you can hear me. Just so you know, I've got next to me, I'm so pleased to have you. Go on, let's do this French style. <laughs> I've got Spanish Amaya style here. As well. <laughs> Spanish style as well. Uh, Amaya is um, Big Fish. She's in charge of the A3, of the single aisle program, that's the A220. Uh -huh. And we have some pictures, and the A320. Uh -huh. We've got some pictures to show you of the A220 Air Baltic, yeah. which I think you know very, very well. Very well. If, if we could just see some pictures of the A220 Baltic now, and you can talk about this plane. Well, so tell me about it. The first thing I have to say is just to thank Air Baltic for supporting us because they are a great ambassador of the A220 family. Uh, they've been showcasing with us the A220-300 during this week. As you know, they're operating the aircraft with 148 seats on board. They're an amazing customer. Already they're the largest customer in Europe with 50 aircraft on order and 30 options. They're already flying 19 aircraft. And what's very, very interesting is that they're using the full versatility of the aircraft because they're using it in very short sectors but they're also flying all the way down by six hours, all the way from Riga to Abu Dhabi. They're flying to Almaty. And this is thanks to the uh, potential of the aircraft. It has a huge range. And for those who had the pleasure to visit the, the aircraft, an amazing cabin that can afford to fly passengers comfortably for those six hours. Okay. You're a marketing, you sold it to me. <laughs> Tell me about the, we've had some amazing success with the extra long range 325. Uh -huh. Tell me about that. So the F-21 XLR is the latest evolution of the F-21 Neo, hugely successful part of the A320 Neo family. As you know already, both the A220 and the A320 Neos are very, very successful thanks to the high economies they bring. 20% cost reduction versus the previous generation aircraft they are replacing. In the case of the F-21 XLR, it's just there's nothing that compares with it. Uh, you're going to be capable, capable of flying all the way of 4,700 nautical miles on a two-class configuration. And uh, this is something really that's going to allow airlines to open new destinations, to link cities that have not been economically viable before. And so we're going to see very, very interesting connections being made. And for us, customers and passengers, it's going to allow us to travel around the world. By the way, very economically, because replacing jets from previous generations will bring 30% uh, savings It'll for the airlines. It will be quieter airlines. than this fighter plane. It will definitely be quieter. Actually, we're talking about the quietest single aisle uh, built right now. I just want to turn to our viewers again. One major issue 
for Airbus, yeah? it's the UK and what's happening with the Brexit discussions. And Airbus has been very vocal about this. And just yesterday, I caught up with the head of Airbus UK to discuss with her what this Brexit means for Airbus and what Airbus wants. So let's listen in from Catherine Bennett here. Good to see you, Catherine. Nice to see you. What brings you to Le Bourget this year? Well, not only to be able to survey these amazing aircraft and see the Vahana um, demonstrator on display, of course, there's also work to be done. Uh, we've got some UK visitors here that I need to host and ensure that they meet our top management and go and see some of the UK suppliers who are also here. It's a global aerospace show and something we all need to be part of. One thing that you can't get away from is Brexit. Is that still pretty much in the headlines for you? Very much. It's on my top three of issues, but I like to talk about other things too. But uh, now you've asked, uh, let's ensure that we keep the messages going, that a no deal Brexit is absolutely something Airbus doesn't want. Of course, Airbus has spent a lot of time and energy. We have over 100 people working on our Brexit task force to ensure that Airbus is ready. So should October 31st happen in a negative way, then we're ready. We have all our parts accounted for, we, our people know what they're doing. So I'd say we're 90, 90% ready. But of course, we are concerned about the UK supply chain. Will they be ready? So this is why we're trying to advise that we need to avoid a no deal Brexit. So you have 100 people working on the Brexit issue. How important is Airbus in the UK? So we have 14,000 people spread over 21 sites, some bigger, some smaller. We estimate we're responsible for 100,000 jobs in the UK supply chain. We contribute hugely. We've got great universities. We spend about nearly 8 billion uh, euros in purchasing every year. So we're a big part. We're proud to be part of the Airbus family. What's your message to the Airbus employees, particularly who are working outside the UK? One thing I would say to them is thank you to all colleagues from Airbus who've given myself and our UK colleagues support on the Brexit topic and also it's so important how we work together in a coordinated, integrated way, focusing on innovation, developing sustainable aircraft, and it's working together that Airbus is good at. And just on the Brexit thing again, are, are people getting the message that you're talking to? A lot of people, when I meet, I say that I'm from Airbus, they say, oh yes, we've heard your story, but that's not to assume that everybody knows what our issues are. We don't want to be become boring. We want to ensure that people know that we're, we're fact-based. We've researched the impacts for us and you know, just keep repeating the message. And we want to work with the government stakeholders as well. We need to ensure that we all work together to avoid chaos. You said there are other key issues you want to talk about other than Brexit. What are they? Well, one of the things is, uh, is sustainable aviation, the contributions we make. We have funding through the UK government for our EFAN X project, working very closely with other big aerospace companies in the UK, such as Rolls-Royce. That's a big topic for us. The other big project we have, particularly in Filton, is the Wing of Tomorrow engineering project, which again will be the future for new aircraft. Satellites, always work to be done there. We're very proud of the contribution our space industry makes. And lastly, a message to the outside people who are watching Airbus here at the air show, who are young, who are dreaming about coming into this industry, what do you say to them? I say get off your bottom and come down to a show, have a look at some of these amazing products, come and talk to our early careers team. We, de we have lots of um, stands at lots of trade shows all around the UK, we go into schools. I would really encourage people to think about engineering as a career. Because you're, you're hiring, the doors are open. Absolutely, we still, we have over 100 apprentices we hire each year. We spend a lot of money on training our people and you know, encourage graduates and postgraduates to apply. We have great jobs, great innovation, and we want people to be part of our future. Catherine Bennett, thank you very much. Thank you. So there you heard it from the head of Airbus UK on Brexit, but more importantly for you that's watching us, you know, Airbus is hiring. If you're keen on getting into this industry, uh, there's a lot of jobs here. And as you know, we need like 300,000 pilots over the next 20, 30 years. So if you really are keen, do get in touch with us. Amaya, it's been too short. Thank you so much it for your time. It is, but I've loved it. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. And, See uh, you next time. Indeed. We'll, we'll call you up, no problem. I'll be happy to join you again. Thank you. Here's See another you. guest. Yeah. Come on uh, in. Bye. Bye-bye. Hello, Prophet. 
Good to see Chris, you. Good to see you again. You just arrived. You can see your your baby. Oh, isn't it beautiful? This is your 330. Uh, just for our audience out there, the 330 Neo is is his job to market it. Is it an easy plane to market? Yeah, because it's great. <laughs> <laughs> He also has a straw hat because he's from Scotland, as you can tell from the accent, and they're not used to sun. No, I don't know quite what it is. There's a big, rather large 100 watt bulb here up there in the sky, so I'm not quite sure what it is. So I'm just going to keep my hat on and stay very pale. <laughs> tell me about this plane. Well, 330 Neo is really a, an aircraft that's gone from being a one that we were just thinking about to realization now. So we've got a new wing, we've got a new, new Rolls Royce Trent 7000 engine. We've got a new cabin, and we've got one one of the most economical aircraft in the world flying, and that's why we've got company here. We've got Thai Asia X. That's an aircraft that's going to be delivered next week. We've got that here, and that's what it's doing. And it says in the back of that plane, everyone can fly now, and that's what it's all about, delivering value to people. And we do that with the 330 to both the airlines and also everybody who flies on them. Because as, as we see the plane, it's, just for people who are watching us on, on this Neo version, it's going to go about 240 kilometers an hour, about 1500, 500 meters into the air on this seven minute loop, which it looks like it's just gliding. We can hardly hear it, can we? Well, that's the other thing. Environment around airports is very important now. And there's environment, the local environment is all about emissions and it's also about silence. And we've got an incredibly quiet aircraft. In fact, we've got the first aircraft to be certificated to the new ICAO Chapter 14, which is a new noise regulation, and we were the first ever aircraft to be certificated to do that. So local noise around airports will be low. We've got 12% less fuel burn for the aircraft overall, and that means, again, lower CO2 emissions, so we can play our part in doing air transport's bit to try and get emissions down. Grover, what I was interested in is what you said earlier, it was, uh, we're all flying now. I mean, what, aviation growth is, what, 5% a year, because we have yep. a growing middle, people need to understand that there's a growing middle class, people want to travel, and, you know, it's not just in Europe or the States or Western Europe or, or in the West, in Western countries. It's growing everywhere, right? It's growing everywhere, and it's growing particularly in Asia. Uh, you've got companies like, we just had an order this week from Cebu Pacific. They are going to put a very high density aircraft in there, but it's to deliver value to their customers, deliver value to Filipinos and allow them to travel around, travel around the world and travel around all of Asia. So that's what it's about, is this emerging people wanting to travel, wanting to see things that we go, oh yeah, it's great, we can see them. Now everyone can. And that's where it's really, that's where the 330 is key because it brings the economy for the airlines that allows them to offer competitive fares. Now, uh, just behind us, we have the nerve center of Airbus. It's a pavilion. There's hundreds of people. There's a lot of people on your team working there. If anyone is watching these amazing pictures and is thinking, wavering, should I go it or not? Uh, can you do them a summer deal? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, we'll do deals to every airline that wants to come here. We are very much open for business as ever. Okay, so you know that, and you'll give them a glass of champagne if they sign. Oh, definitely, definitely. Come here, we'll do it. No problem. <laughs> Uh, we're just seeing it turning here, and uh, just so you know, for our audience out there, because you'll be thrilled to know that Frank Chapman, who's the, one of the two pilots here, will be in his position tomorrow telling us what it's like to be a test pilot on one of these uh, shows. Oh, and Frank's one of the greats. Yeah. Really enjoyed working with him. And he'll be here talking live about a whole bunch of different things about aviation, about new, I new ideas against turbulence, um, new ideas to make the passenger experience even better. Um, just basically how, many, how he got into being a pilot who was with the military first and he'll talk all about that um, if if there was like one overall message Crawford about the 330 Neo what's the main selling point for you for me it's economics 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 this is the aircraft that will bring the most profit for airlines it will bring the most uh, value for customers of those airlines so it's all about the economics is that really what it comes down to with airlines? That's what they need? No, there's more to it than that. I think there is more. I think there's also the branding. Uh, and I think we see that on uh, our new airspace cabin that we've got on the aeroplane. It is really all new floor to floor, new bins, new sidewalls, new ceiling, you name it, bigger bins. And that is where, and we also have a special mood lighting. And that allows them to then be able to put their branding in our canvas. We give them a really good canvas they give us, they can then put their own branding on it and then they can make that experience a little bit special. And that's what it is. I look at uh, here, we've got a low cost carrier here, but they do make 
the experience of those passengers just that little bit special because they want them to come back again. Sure. As we're talking, we can see the plane now getting ready for its landing now on its seven minute trip. It's just turning, tilting there a little bit. Uh, and uh, we're lucky actually because this air show is happening on a pretty muggy day here and th thunderstorms are expected sometime in this afternoon. We were wondering whether this would happen, this air show, uh, with, with the flight display today, but we managed to get through that bad weather. That's great. And uh, we're here to see it. One thing which, uh, Crawford, which we spoke to Ingo yesterday. He's kind of like the marketing yeah. uh, wizard on uh, connectivity. It's amazing some of the things that he could, he said you can have them 330, like even just things like uh, through connectivity, you will know who's not got the seatbelt put on when there's turbulence. So they don't have to go around checking every yep, person. Exactly. That kind of stuff. It's, it's all there about allowing them to manage the aircraft better, allowing them to be able to make sure that everyone's safe on the aircraft. And then other things as well. I mean, on this air, on, on Thai here, it's uh, bring, your, bring your own device for the in-flight entertainment. Again, you get what you want. So really, we're, we've got a whole package here of connectivity and technology that brings the best passenger experience there is. Uh, Frank, I think you just did a fast one. He was just about to land and decided to take off again. So he is a great pilot. <laughs> <laughs> so are all the rest of our test pilots, I have to say. <laughs> just, just so you know, there's four people actually on this plane right now, two flight engineers and two pilots. Um, and they really get a kick out of this because when they're not flying as well, they're also talking to the customers, they're explaining yep. to them, you know, they're taking questions from them and how it's going and all that kind of stuff. Um, pretty amazing stuff. Crawford, it's been great to have you. Great. I see the 350 is queuing up now, and we have another guest here. Yes. Who well, else come? We'll let her talk about Big Brother. All right. I appreciate it. Thanks no very problem. much. Thank you. Take care. Hello, Marisa. Oh, Good to have you? you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Uh, just so we're very lucky, I have another guest here. Marisa is really another one of these big fish. She's uh, head of marketing for the A350, and you can see it on the screen right now. Do you see it here? Oh, yes, yeah, getting ready. So, go on then, tell me about this. Well, this airplane that is about to take off is the most advanced large white body in the market, flying and available in the market for many years to come. It's, uh, it's going to remain the most advanced airplane. It's, uh, it's the only all new design in its category. And uh, you know, that means that it has uh, the most um, uh, advanced materials, more than 70% of the weight of the airplane is made of, you know, uh, advanced material, composite and uh, composite material and uh, titanium, and that saves a lot of weight and a lot of cost and maintenance. It has the most advanced large aero engines, the Trent XWB. Uh, beautiful wind, excellent aerodynamics, and uh, everything combined with the very robust uh, uh, systems are providing this airplane with excellent, uh, excellent efficiency. Can you give me any? Um, can you tell? Uh, it's just about to take off now. Let's just listen in and see as it takes off. Let's see how well he does on the takeoff. <laughs> Well, as he, as he approaches takeoff, there's a four-man team on this, two uh, flight engineers and two pilots. Just getting ready for what will be a seven-minute flight. It'll go about 240 kilometers an hour, 500 meters up, seven-minute spin around the area. As we wait for this plane to take, oh, here we go. taken off. Uh, now we do. Maybe this sounds like a silly question. Wow. Is, it, 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 is noise a really big issue these days when customers come to you? Well, noise, or noise reduction? Yeah, noise is, uh, is a big issue. It's part of uh, the whole um, environmental um, issue that aviation has to face and has to deal with. And uh, A350 uh, and A350-1000 in particular is being designed to reduce the noise level. So it's, uh, it has a noise footprint and takeoff and landing that is more than 50% less than the airplanes that it will be replacing. Can you, give me an, can you tell me uh, um, why this plane really fits on some routes, how it just makes total business sense? 
Well, uh, first of all, uh, as I said, uh, it has a, an all new design and that brings a lot of efficiency. So compared to the previous generation airplanes, that's 25% better economics. It means 25% uh, less fuel, 25% less emissions, which is also part of the equation. And, uh, and uh, more globally speaking, it's 25% less operating cost. So that already offers the uh, magnificent opportunities. It's a very large airplane that has the economics of a very small airplane, you know, when you, when you, when you think about it. And then it has a tremendous range capability. It is really... It, it Give me an idea. Give me a couple of routes that it can do. Well, you know, we know we have this airplane in service, uh, around 20 of them. Uh, with two customers, with uh, Cathay Pacific and uh, Qatar Airways. Cathay Pacific, uh, they launch the longest route that they have in their network with the first three A350-1000s that we deliver to them. And this is a uh, direct service from Hong Kong to Washington. And this is around 18 hours flight. Do, okay? I, get a, do I get a meal on that flight? I, you, you probably will get more than one meal on that flight. It's long enough to have a couple of them at least. And, uh, and, and it fits perfectly, as you were saying, because first, it's capable of doing it. Second, it has the economics to allow the airline to really go that path. And thirdly, it has the best cabin. You know? Just while we're seeing these amazing pictures of the plane just gliding there, my colleague Martin Fent from the Airbus Press Department has given me this cheat sheet, which I'm very grateful for. So just so you know what this plane's doing, after it took off, it went on a steep climbing, turning away with landing gear retraction, followed by a turn back towards the display center, descending to around 600 feet. It did a 360 degree turn, and then climbed to 2,000 feet, that's about 500 meters, and then descending back to 600 feet. It then does a low speed pass with gear retracted and flap in configuration three with a speed of around 220 kilometers an hour. A climb, it turns away with the landing gear extension and it turns back near the end for a fly pass as it goes into its landing configuration, final turn and landing. And like I said, you'll have much more on this from my expert, Frank Chapman, who just flew on the 330, and of course the 350, he knows pretty well as well, will be here in your position tomorrow, telling us a lot more, because I, I just know nonsense. Excellent. So tell me, what kind of questions are customers asking you on this very, very busy week? Well, the questions that the customers are asking us is, you know, how much bigger this airplane is compared to the A350-900, which is the, uh, the smaller sibling. And uh, well, it's uh, exactly seven meters longer in fuselage, that means around 40 to 50 more seats, including additional business class seats to be, you know, uh, in, in just to, in, with the same to maintain the same ratios for the for the large of the cabin, and um, and uh, they also want to know how these two customers that are already operating the A350 and and the 1000 are doing with this airplane and. Uh, and one of the most important things for, for our customers and potential customers is the flexibility that the two airplanes offer uh, the airline to be operating in the same routes because they both have excellent um, range capability. It's exactly the same cabin, exactly the same pilots, 95% uh, commonality in terms of parts. So it's, it's really the same airplane with, uh, with a bigger capacity. I was speaking to Ingo yesterday, who's kind of the uh, connectivity wizard in, in the airspace by Airbus. Um, uh, he was telling me about some amazing new innovations that we're talking about on the, for the 350. Can mm -hmm. you tell me a bit about those for those who missed that? Well, the, this airplane has a cabin that has inspired the whole airspace cabin that we have introduced in service with the A330neo, and it goes on the A3, it's going to go on the A320 as well. Uh, well, of course, it's, it's a native. Uh, uh, a native airplane in terms of a digital era. It's, this is one. Uh, it's a millennial. It's more than a millennial. This airplane. So everything is already uh, built in, and we can offer a very clean, very spacious cabin with all the uh, all the cabling, all the uh, facilities to offer that latest generation IFE and uh, all the commodities that we need in the cabin without. Uh, um, having to interfere into the customer comfort. And the other thing which is so important I think is what? We're going to see um, traffic doubling in the next 15-20 years so you need these bigger aircraft because airports are stretched, right? Absolutely. And, uh, and this is it. This is what we are doing with this airplane. We are 
uh, giving our airlines the possibility to go that big with the economics of uh, uh, what today are doing with uh, a lot smaller airplanes than this. So it's, uh, it's given that that capacity that is needed are the economics that they are going to be needing to to be competitive in the market and with huge flexibility in terms of seating and uh, range capability. This airplane has 1,000 nautical miles more range than its competitor. That's very important because that adds, well, you can go quite far with a thousand kilometers. Can't Absolutely. You? Uh, very cheeky, the pilots there would look like they're about to land and decided to continue up on the rig, mm -hmm. can't get them down. Um, so what do you think, um, one thing which is really important is that we're talking about the growth of um, the middle class in places like India and China. Um, so the, the aviation industry is looking rosy for you. Well, look, when we look at where uh, the growth is coming from is coming from all these emerging markets and uh, I you name it is it's India is uh, is China and uh, this airplane the A350-1000 in particular and A350 in general is becoming the reference in the trans-pacific market it can really go from deep into Asia to deep into the United States and uh, and it has that capability to be to be the, the transatlantic reference Oh, Trans-Pacific okay. reference, sorry. Okay. Um, we're seeing the plane now getting ready to land, we're being told. So look at these pictures here. As you see, it looks beautiful. And we're very lucky to have this because the weather's actually turning for the worse here in Paris. Yes. It's pretty muggy here, and uh, um, we're expecting some thunderstorms here. So, But this air show is just going fine. This flying display was able to go ahead, no problem. We were a bit worried earlier, but you can see that uh, this was able to handle the weather conditions, no problem. As it slowly I think is making its way towards take uh, towards landing we're told looks lovely doesn't it it is it is absolutely beautiful look at that so you're taking the a350 on your next holiday of course always <laughs> always right answer holidays and uh, and uh, business trouble because you really can uh, make a very very long trip without noticing that you are flying <laughs> <laughs> Some of our customers call it the jet lag fighter. The jet lag fighter? Tell me about that. Why? <laughs> because it has everything you need to don't feel jet lag when you get at the destination. So it has uh, excellent uh, humidity levels in the cabin and it has lower pressure, very low, no very low noise levels, it's very spacious, has moonlighting, uh, latest IFE, so everything you need to arrive at your destination fully refreshed. Hello. Um, I think we've lost a couple of the. Uh, we got some people behind us. I can't. We can't see the picture right now. Um, something. Okay. And so the A350, as we're losing the picture, is uh, basically landing as we speak. As we lose the picture, it's been great to have you, Marisa. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank okay, you very for your much. expertise, and hopefully we'll catch you again. Okay. Good Thanks. luck with your customers. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. So anyway, as we come to the end of this uh, new live on day three. It's been absolutely wonderful to have you here. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as us. Um, again, some great guests. Tomorrow we have one of the pilots with us as well. Uh, he'll be talking, uh, telling us what it's like to be on this air show. Just so you rem remember that uh, Airbus is celebrating its birthday, its 50th anniversary, 50th birthday this year. And every day we'll be giving you a top story, 50 stories for 50 years. So go to our website at airbus.com and you'll find your new story. In the meantime, thank you so much for being with us. We really enjoyed it and we hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you here again tomorrow.